Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the on air. The air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cruise Control. Your on-air automotive magazine, like it says on the logo behind me. I'm Les <laughs> Jackson, and I am live, as we are every week. And that guy that just coughed and nodded is Fred Staub, hey. of course, the heart and soul of the show. Oh, thank you, Les. Well, you are. Well, thank and you. And I'm just the comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have a good story about Toyota and uh, the RAV4, I do. don't you? Yes. Uh, yes, the uh, 25 years ago they brought out the Rav Four here. Wow! And uh, that in, uh, man, I you know, <laughs> time is moving too quickly. Anyway, uh, they're celebrating it with a new hybrid uh, edition. Yeah, yeah, that's good news. If you want a hybrid version of that vehicle, and hey, Toyotas why not uh, have great hybrid versions? So. Uh, that is a cool story to start off with. And then we're going to ask, why is GM removing heated seats and heated steering wheels from its vehicles? Mm. Two of the most popular items that people really look for. <clears throat> I, I, we have a constitutional right to, <laughs> to heated, heated seats, seats <laughs> and steering <laughs> wheels. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, I think we know the answer, but yep. we'll, we'll talk about it. And uh, Nissan has priced out the 2022 Sentra, which is all grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all grown up. That's a good way to it put is. it. Our little Sentra is off on its own. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about what's new for 2022 with that model. Also, we're going to talk tech. Ford has plans to charge your car, your electric car, as fast as as you can fill your tank with gas and we'll tell you the main limitation and how they're getting around it well you know once that day is here and it will be mm -hmm. uh, for everybody then that's the end of anybody's anxiety yeah oh i agree completely and uh, it's always good to talk about this tech because we try to stay a couple of years ahead of what the market's doing keep you informed of what's going on at cruise control you and know what i'll bet you there will be warning signs when all, when that happens and it's an everyday thing i'll bet there'll be a warning sticker that says you know don't put jumper cables on the telephone pole wires <laughs> no. yeah that could be right. Well, I mean, they, they honestly do that. There are, I'm seeing it on Facebook all the time. These, uh, these moms and grandmoms are showing actual uh, stickers on, on toys that, and other things for kids that, you know, that says, you know, don't throw the kid in the pail. Oh, yeah. Or, I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what happens. Uh, people get involved, and those warning stickers have to go on. But yep. this show's yep. got no warning stickers other than we will be right back after the break. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. You're on Cruise Control. We'll be right back.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub, Les Jackson, automotive information. If you're going out to buy a vehicle this weekend, well... Please, please don't. <laughs> you're going <laughs> to be in for a little surprise, but if you've been listening oh. to the show, you know what's going on, right, Les Jackson? Absolutely. Well, I think anyone who listens to this show knows all about the chip shortage. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the the prices of new vehicles and no real ability to uh, make any deals on them. Yeah, I know. And uh, I often think we're talking about all these new models. When will we actually see them in showrooms? Yeah. 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 But we're no, still sti not uh, not the usual October November showroom re uh, reveals. That's right. You're not going to have year end deals and leftovers and all that stuff. There's no leftovers. Uh, and in this case, some people might be upset by that. But I like leftovers no. to eat leftovers, don't you? No, that's right. <laughs> so let's talk about the Toyota Rav4. It is hard to believe, but this vehicle is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Toyota is celebrating with some small changes to the uh, lineup. And one of them is a more affordable uh, hybrid edition, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, this is, uh, I wonder how available these are, because Toyota has done pretty well in avoiding problems with the uh, chip shortage, haven't they? Um, but well, they have, but... As of the last week, they're they're now, they said they're running out. Hmm. Well, what we're uh, talking about here, their new model, is the hybrid SE, which comes in between the XLE and XSE hybrids. Uh, it is for buyers that want more style and sport. That's you, Les Jackson. Um. <laughs> There's a model. Well, <laughs> yeah, I left you speeches. Speech. I'm just uh, noticing on the on the white, uh, both versions, the the wheel well height. Yeah, a lot is of clearance. way up there. They're, boy, they're all the all the companies are really showing off this off road capability. I think every manufacturer that builds small SUVs or CUVs in this case. Uh, right. has a vehicle with black wheels and a little bit higher ground clearance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me tell you about this SE. It comes with a monotone paint, uh, fabric trim seats inside, plus a 7-inch touchscreen and six audio speakers. Uh, a little bit less expensive. And uh, it will be offered in Calvary, Calvary Blue, which is uh, one color we've been showing you. Uh, and then there will be uh, an, a TRD off-road package. So, uh -huh. yeah. So a little bit less expensive, a little bit sportier. And they're just trying to kind of meet a number when get people in there. Uh, I don't think it's uh, it's basically two thousand dollars difference in MSRPs of the XLE and XSE. This SE is going to fit right in the middle of that, so that is really splitting the difference. That's right. We don't actually know the the MSRPs yet. No, but you can guess it. Uh, that will yeah. be right in between those. But uh, it's offering more options. Um, I think the RAV4 hybrid is one of the best. And it's just kind of hard to believe that it's been around um, for 25 years. I, went, yeah, I remember I, when I a remember. friend got it, and I was like, wow, what's that? It's like a yeah. little truck, a little Jeep. And they were very small back then. I remember over they, they had a local uh, DC launch of the, of the RAV4, I thought. 15 years ago but it's 25 um and uh, i remember a whole line of them uh up on uh, 22nd street up above the uh um well the white house area so a uh, big difference in the way they look and drive and function oh yeah uh, these days but they're 
they're just terrific. They always have been. Yeah, one of the things that they always been noted for is the low uh, floor in the back and the ease of loading. Yeah. Um, I I do remember the time when they were launched and they had the tire on the back, and I never liked that a tire on the that, back. That's right, and they they referred to them as cute utes. Cute utes, <laughs> yeah. You, that's a term that's been uh, dropped. I'm sure that's gone, and it's grown a little bit. Like uh, all of us, as we get older, we grow a little bit, but. Uh, happy birthday to the RAV4. Still yep. in the fight, and it's a much bigger fight with compact CUVs. When we come back, what's going on at GM? They're deleting an option, one of the most popular options people love. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. We'll explain. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Fred and I were talking uh, before the uh, break about uh, what's going on at Toyota with the RAV4. And here we go with more interesting uh, negative, I guess. It's not bad news, but it's negative news. GM uh, is, is removing uh, the heated seat and heated steering wheel feature from number of their vehicles oh yeah uh, obviously for one reason um uh, don't have the chips yeah but but th these are certainly heated seats i mean I, I i don't know anyone anymore who doesn't demand heated seats 
Yeah, and listen to this list. This is according to a report in Automotive News, and uh, they say this is going to go into effect starting next week on November 15th, uh, and it will be many vehicles, dozens of nameplates, Colorado, Blazer, I mean, one of their top products, Blazer, Chevy Equinox, GMC Canyon, GMC Terrain, Silverado, Chevy Traverse. Uh, all of these are going to lose, unless you buy the highest trim out there, all of these are going to lose the heated steering wheel and heated seat and ventilated hmm. seat feature. Uh, these changes are expected to remain in place through the 2022 model year and uh, they might be compensating uh, customers it could range between $150 and $500 well that's not enough I now, mean honestly that's not enough I don't think so and then it says here it's also possible some models may be retrofitted with heated and ventilated seats when parts again become available uh, like we were saying during the break, Les, it's basically going to get back to you have a milk crate and a steering wheel and a brake pedal. <laughs> that's that's right. You have you have door locks and a heater. <laughs> uh, but now clearly, now we don't have any information from GM's engineering people, but clearly they'll 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 continue producing the seats with the heating elements in them. I would imagine. And, and they'll go into the vehicles, maybe even the switches. Yeah. Um, and and then later, all they have to do is put in the little circuit card uh, and connect the power, uh, which is already in the wiring harness. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, I would imagine at having pulled apart many cars, I r realized early on every car is yeah. built to accept all options. Uh, and I've added power windows and locks to vehicles that did not have power windows and locks, but they had right. all the connectors and you would just get the parts and snap them in and, and put the, uh, take out the handle and put the uh, levers in and change the door cards. I did that. Um, but the chips, I guess that control these things are what behind the dash or under the hood. Uh, well, I think in the case of uh, seats, the chip is probably in the controller in the switch gear. No, yeah, okay. Because uh, it, the it seat really the wouldn't be much of a of a circuit. The heated steering wheel, uh, boy, that's got to be in the dash. I mean, well, just I'll I'll tell you this. I mean, that's an expensive option sometimes, and to just get five hundred dollars back, I think there might be more than that in parts in a uh, heated steering wheel. I think so too. I mean, plus I, you're not getting a deal on the car. No, <laughs> you're paying more and getting less. <laughs> this is this is not a good business model. Well, look what we've seen eliminated. BMW's eliminated touchscreens. Yep. Um. GM has eliminated uh, the heated seats and heated steering wheel, T digital temperature displays on some pickup truck models. It's just going to be one blank off plate. Display. It's going to be one blank <laughs> off a... plate. That's what your dash is going to look like. Yeah. You're uh, getting the rare delete option. <laughs> right. Um, mm. You know, uh, wireless phone chargers, which I think is something great to have. Forget that. Not, yeah. not going in. Uh, and and more and I think you know you have to think about this when you go to buy a vehicle uh, certain now and and when you have to when you buy these vehicles in the future from the 2021 2022 model year you got to remember these may not have things that you think they have they may have the switches and the the amenities may not be active so it's something that you have to think about. And when you price out a vehicle, like you said, I mean, look at what BMW charges for heated seats. That It's a huge, huge yeah. price, sometimes $10,000 because it comes in a package. Um, you may not be getting this. You may, the vehicle may not be able to be retrofitted or not in an economical way. Um, 
And frankly, I don't really want the dealer snapping in boards and reaching under the dashboard and, you know, all of a sudden Uh, plugs are pulled out. And how does this affect the used value of these things? Well, that's what I, I, I was thinking about, you know. Now, five years down the line, well, that model had heated seats. Nope. This one uh, has the switches, nope. but it doesn't work or it was never activated. Um, yeah, it's it's like selling a, a car with a deleted airbag, which is legal. Mm-hmm. It has to be marked. But, you know, nobody wants that. No. So it's going to these are going to be weird cars, uh, weird vehicles for many years to come as they're sold used. Um you know, I don't know. I don't know if they can be retrofitted. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm sure they're doing everything they can to engineer retrofit uh, packages. Well, Ford has said uh, uh, that in the future they're going to have bring all of this, all the these chip, uh, whatever they sit in a chassis or or whatever, some kind of plastic box. They're going to bring that out to where it's easy to get to. So they can be added in the future. And let's face it, the way the industry is going, it's going to be a subscription model, I think, for certain features. Um, Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And it will be able to be, they'll be in all cars and they'll be able to be turned on or be able to be turned off, right? You know, and actually, this is a good time. If if your lifestyle uh, works with it, it's a great time to buy a pure electric car because... You don't have, uh, you know, an an ECU and all the computers that run engine and transmission systems. So they'll have enough chips for those. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder if Ford was building their F-150s and setting them aside when they couldn't get chips. I wonder if they ever got chips for them or if they still have. Uh, large parking lots filled of semi-assembled uh, vehicles. We'll we'll have uh, to see. That's an interesting thing. You know, now maybe maybe what they're doing is recovering chips from uh, flooded vehicles. Oh, that's and a- from salvage yards. You know, just pull chips out of one or two year old salvaged vehicles. The chip should be fine. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know if that, I mean, it might cost them more to have somebody go around and find that, but I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Uh, certainly, this uh, has to be one of the uh, worst scenarios out there that they thought this would not be a problem. And, and now it's not only yeah. a problem, it's a problem that's stretching out across three, potentially three model years. Um, and certainly at a time where people want more in their vehicles, more uh, features we're getting we're going towards more and more chips um you know and then you you look at and we're going to talk about this after the break how now the infrastructure bill requires the development of something that probably will use a lot of chips exactly. <laughs> to, uh, a system to detect a uh, uh, potential drunk driver i mean it the, yeah. the demand is only going to get greater over time and and going to self-driving vehicles down the line it's just not going to stop so you better start building those plants yeah Uh, yeah if you if you uh had a bunch of investors and wanted to build the chip plant uh you might want to do it even though it'll take you a few years to build it you're going to make money yeah all right well we're going to be right back with cruise control I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com.
And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. The other voice you're about to hear is none other than Les Jackson. Two he is car here. He <laughs> you are there. <laughs> Two car guys hanging out and talking about what's going on in the automotive industry. If you're looking for a, uh, a new vehicle and uh, you're deciding, should I wait for the next model year or maybe not? Or why don't my, <laughs> why don't my heated seats work? We may have the answer for you. Don't forget to <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check out the YouTube page, and more. Uh, let's, let's talk about the Sentra, the Nissan Sentra. We have some pricing information. Great vehicle. Uh, it's It's been a terrific vehicle. It's been a great uh entry level vehicle for you know by your by your college bound student um you can trick it out nice too. To look to, at that interior go to school in uh people first job you could commute to work mm -hmm. it's been a solid rather plain jane uh up car until now for a number of years um very very reliable yeah but it's not really plain jane anymore you look at it no it's way got two two-tone yeah. paint it's got a great exterior um and let's talk about what's going on with it for 2022 uh, a couple of different things going on uh, there's a midnight edition package for the centra sr uh, the centra sv grade gets a new all-weather package and what this is really great news the uh, standard Nissan Safety Shield 360 across all grade levels uh, makes the 2022 Sentra the most standard uh, vehicle with the most standard safety features in its class. You know, 10 years ago, that picture right there would have been the inside of a BMW. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, it's uh, got a fuel efficient 149 horsepower, two liter four. That's available in the S, SV, and SR grades. Um, pretty nice vehicle, though. It was a, a 2021 North American Car of the Year finalist. Uh, Auto Trader, 10 great cars for recent college grads. Auto Pacific's 2021 Most Satisfying Mainstream Compact Car. And Cars.com Honor Roll in the 2021 Car Seat Fit Report Card. But you look at these prices, and they're pretty amazing. The S starts at nineteen thousand five ten. The SV starts at twenty thousand five seventy, and the top of the range Sentra SR starts at twenty two thousand one hundred. Now, even that gives you a lot of latitude to load this up, load these vehicles up, and still be well under thirty thousand dollars, doesn't it? well under 30,000 and the other thing is the lease prices on these things are incredibly low mm -hmm. you know like 240 bucks um so it's a it's a real deal it's a real deal and the interiors the two-tone the stitching in the seats of course is one of the higher end models but i mean it Nissan has done a great job with this. Also, the fact that people don't want sedans. And uh, you can buy one of these sedans. I bet you can deal on it, too, don't you think? Well, I, in, in ordinary times, yes. Um, now, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess you stand a better chance than another model. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just but, some, boy, it's, a, it's, something, it's something to look at. Something to look at, something to consider. And uh, certainly if you're looking to buy a second vehicle or a first vehicle, man, that would be a great first vehicle. It's, it's for nice. Someone. <laughs> yeah, I would like it. I'd like it right now. And we drive all kind of cars, don't we? Yeah, actually. I, <laughs> be I, fine. Uh, I want to get in one. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, be a good deal. Nissan Sentra. So uh, check it out. Put it on your list if you're thinking about a compact sedan. Hey, do you want to talk a little tech uh Ford, you and I have talked about this. We say when electric vehicles can be recharged at the same speed, 
that you can fill your gas tank, that that would be a major game changer for electric vehicles, where it's just a one for one. You either pull up to the gas pump or you you fill up fill up to the recharging station, and you go in and you get your um, your <laughs> pick the snack food of your choice, Les. Yeah, just make sure you go to the right pump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's, yeah, it, it, that would be worse than uh, if you try to put gas in an electric car. Just, well, it wouldn't work well. But um, so Ford has been, of course, they have the Mach E, which I actually have one out, out in the driveway, and that will be a future at the wheel test. Yeah. Um, they have are you a, are you plugged into 120 volts? Uh, well, it's charged up when i got it so i haven't plugged it into okay. anything yet so uh matter of fact i think during this review i'm gonna go out and find something on their charging network and see uh see what that whole good thing idea like. so yeah. uh i think they do provide a card for it or something like that so i'll have to research that a little bit before i try it but i think i think there are some chargers around me and if be fun i'll just charge it up and go into a store and then uh see where it's at uh, when I come out, but uh, Ford has looked at this situation and they've seen one of the leading one of the problems with charging an electric vehicle uh, quickly as quickly as filling a gas tank is the is the problem is the cable that go that carries yeah. the electricity to the car could overheat. You could probably melt it because you're pushing so many electrons through it right well yeah you're pushing so much current through it's like a toaster yeah and uh, and the wire heats up and uh, it'll burn so off the insulation you, that's right if you cool the wire then, then uh then those electrons will continue flowing all right well what they've done is they've teamed up with purdue university and they're developing a new patent pending charging method uh, it will be uh, a, a new cooling method where liquid serves as the active li cooling agent and it enables more heat to be extracted from the cable by changing liquid to vapor. What is it, like a, a radiator would coolant in it? What do you think? Well, you would have like a, a, a sheath around the cable, which would be uh, watertight, and you'd fill that sheath. I'm talking simplistically now mm -hmm. uh, with water mm -hmm. and let it vaporize. Um, and you could use this heat. You could use that. That's what they have to do. They have to use this. You could heat use the heat. So uh, well, you could rent the heat to the GM buyers that don't have <laughs> heating seats. <laughs> that's right. You can, they can have a tank yeah. that heats up the seat. Yeah. Um, so, they also have to cool the battery too. I mean, you and I have talked about yeah. this. If you're hot charging your battery all the time, I mean, it, it will technically reduce the the length of the life of the battery, right? That's right. But of course, they're building uh, heat sinks, which are liquid cool, uh, right to the battery packs, and um, that 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 has been worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the tricky part, uh, because you know, there, there are two solutions. The other solution, which was is be really simple, is that at the fast charging station, you just put a big fat wire, you know, like the like the high tension cables on your telephone poles. You know, that's a, like a two inch cable, uh, and that'll that'll take all the current you can throw through it. But of course, you can't do that at a charging station because the cable itself would weigh a ton or not a ton, but well, what 100 a, pounds or so. What about and the plug? Plug would be huge. about that big. Yeah. Well, what about yeah. doing away with the cable completely and you pull up and it senses you, there's a, a shoe that comes up and uh, touches the bottom of the car. And, and then now you, you're like metal to metal, basically. You know? like, like an electric trolley or a third rail on a, on a yeah. metro system. Yeah, like a shoe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you'd have safety issues. You'd have to somehow shield the car from anyone throwing anything under it or, or running their hand under it. Yeah. But, but yeah. Interesting. 
I, I I think this will be a problem that will be eventually fixed. It's an engineering problem. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, you will be able to, like you look at, you look at some of the new vehicles, they can get what uh, to 80% charge in 15 minutes. So, yep. and this is just a development that's happened uh, very recently. And I, I think, you know, though there will be more advancements here. What, what what do you think what's the the uh the go no go decision about charging time if you're on a trip with an electric car uh is for me if i had to wait 10 minutes no big deal okay well i'll uh, tell you my 15 minutes maybe not maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back on cruise control Cruise Control. 
Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. Uh, I'm Les, he's Fred, and uh, we thought we would kind of uh, talk about where it stands uh, in the drunk driving world. Unfortunately, uh, drunk driving sort of came down uh, slowly over the years, but then it plateaued uh, several years back, and it's just kind of hovering at uh, 10,000 deaths a year. Wow. And this is just stupid. Um, how many so, How many deaths are there in auto accidents a year? You know, you're pretty uh, good last you. year, well, this year, we're, we're headed for 38,000. All right. So drunk driving is at least uh, a, a, quarter, third, a third, a fourth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's but, big. You know, it's, it's big. And um, finally, the, the administration, uh, not to mention every safety uh, agency in the world is, is fed up and they're just saying, okay, we got to mandate um, drunk driver detection so that they just can't use their car if mm -hmm. they get in it. Mm -hmm. And as we know, we, they've tried various things for, for over the years for people to breathe into. Yeah, sure. Sort of work. The courts order that for for. Uh, there, I think it was frequent. I think it was Saab that had one. I had it in yeah. a test car, <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I kept drinking beers to try to get it to to lock me out so I could test it. But after I drank so many, I, I was like, okay, I'm, I, I'm not going to bother anymore. Yeah, I tried I'm it not in a driving. Volvo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Volvo, Volvo that's had, what a, it was. had a thing here uh, in D.C., of course. Um, and I had I drank uh, three old fashions. <laughs> <laughs> you really shouldn't drive after that. No, but no, no. no. The, the car was stationary at one of the uh, big conference buildings downstairs, so we were we weren't going anywhere in it but it didn't lock me out until my third old fashioned and believe me i had no intention of driving after 3 yeah uh you feel that you feel a lot. That. you you feel that and so the interesting thing here uh the government has given nitsa 3 years to work this out there the current yeah. technology as you said is the old fashioned one you blow into. It's not good. Yeah, it's basically what the police test you with. But instead of giving you a, a result, the result basically either energizes the ignition circuit or de energizes it. Um, and so, really, they're going to start from scratch at building this thing. And I think I think it's probably going to go beyond 2024 because they're starting from scratch. And guess well, what? It uses yeah. chips. It does use <laughs> chips. Well, well, it's going to go forever then. Um, now it, it wants to use it. Want, blood test is great. Yeah, but you can't uh, but do of that. Course you're going to have to prick your finger. No, uh, not, but so what? If, yeah, but if they don't blow into a tube, they're not going to prick their finger every time they go to start their car. But that's that's true. Um, I personally, and I've, I've talked to their, I know some of NHTSA's engineers very well, their old friend, and I've talked to them and I believe it can be done optically okay. with sophisticated eye movement measurement, because if you're, uh, if you're inebriated or if you're in some way, um, limited, uh, your your eye movement will show it. Is that true for everyone, though, or are some people different? And people are different, mm -hmm. um, and it's called nystagmus, the eye movement. Um, and but you could you could personalize the system for each person's car. Mm -hmm. Now the thing Make the measurements and then if it deviates then it says okay you're not driving. Now they say that some of these um drowsy systems you know they're kind of based around that uh and that they don't right. work that well. I've been in a Mercedes I think it was a Mercedes. I don't want to say Mercedes cuz I don't remember but uh one of them kept saying, you've been driving for a long time, and a coffee cup came up on the deck. But I yeah. hadn't been driving for a long time, and I had plenty of rest, and I wasn't nodding off to the best of my ability. And I thought, well, I'm just, I'm just driving 
locally here, I don't, yeah. there's no, I don't feel tired. I don't feel impaired. I don't feel uh, in any way drowsy, but it just was reading whatever I was doing as drowsy. And some people are worried about that, including the Alliance of Automotive Innovation. Uh, they're saying that, you know, these systems may not be accurate and, you know, you don't want to make a system where somebody has to get in their car and drive right away. It's an emergency or whatever, and they can't get it started, you know, when they haven't had anything to drink. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. NHTSA, once they come up with a system and they test it and they know it works, then they have to put out what's known as a, of, uh, of a, what's known as an NPRM, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. Mm -hmm. And then the companies have two years to respond to that and come up with reasons that they can't do it or they can't do it that soon. Or they... So this, you're, you're correct. Uh, this is going to stretch years. Yeah. And let's face it, uh, already they're planning the 2024 model year uh and yep. I'm, I'm not kidding about chips i mean it you're right you know um uh, it's i think it's a good idea i'm not quite sure how it's going to be um used you know or how it's going to be uh uh, uh what would you say uh executed as they say uh implemented implemented yeah yes uh, or government word is promulgate <laughs> that's a great comment. whatever that means yeah uh, how are they going to make it happen i i don't know how right. they're going to make it happen and of course let's remember that most vehicles are 10 11 years old on the road sure and they're not sure. going to have this for for a number of years um could anything be done with sensing the alcohol in the air but then once again uh, I'll, the I'll tell you something that throws the passenger and it's something that throws it off. A lot of people wear very heavy cologne these days, uh, yep. which yep. is very intense where, you know, you're you're riding on a bus or a train with someone. You're like, what is that heavy alcohol smell? And it's somebody's it's cologne. cologne. Yeah, yeah, they're not drinking. Obviously, if I'm out to dinner with my wife, you know, and I'm not drinking. But, it, if, you know, if she's had all the wine that she wants. It's going to detect alcohol in the car. I don't know. I, I really right? think this could stretch out over 10 years. I really do. It but could. By the time um, it gets developed, by the time it gets tested, because this is something, remember, this is something that your car either starts or doesn't start. You know, it's not yeah. It's not like, well, you know, one of the weird features of it doesn't work. It, it could mean, you know, a big problem for people. It's it's going to be very very difficult to get this established. The the alliance of auto manufacturers and other groups like that are going to fight it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, you know it it's going to be very tough to do. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll see where it ends up and what what ends up on vehicles. I think it's not going yeah. to happen anytime soon, as far as. No, but room. I applaud the effort. It's a good effort, and uh, you know, to to eliminate drunk driving completely would be great. And uh, well, what'll eliminate it is that the car drives itself. Well, that could be the default you know? thing. Like, uh, I don't think you're ready to drive, and and it just takes over and drives itself. Yeah. Yeah. At it's... least you're still moving. You're still getting where you want to go. Um, well, also, most people who are drunk. If they got into the car that was autonomous, most would say, okay, drive me home. Yeah, better than dealing with all that legal legal stuff. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate you listening to Cruise Control. Don't forget, check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. You can link over to our YouTube page and more. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road. Bye.